So one of the best things about homeschooling is getting to go on field trips. And you can decide how often you want to do that. And so I'm going to do a video. I don't know what this year is going to look like and what's available and what you feel comfortable doing. But I have found a ton of places in St. Louis that most, most people have never heard of. And you could cover all of American history by field trips around here. So I'm going to share a bunch of those with you and you can pick and choose. So starting with the Native Americans, there's the Mastodon State Historic Site. That's down in Imperial, Missouri, about 30 minutes south. And they have a pretty tiny museum. I think it was like $5 for grown-ups, and then children were free. And it was the first place where they found evidence of Mastodons and Native Americans. And so they found, you know, the arrowheads actually stuck into the Mastodon remains. And so they have a huge replica of a Mastodon and, um, you know, like the arrowheads and the spear thrower and stuff. So the museum's kind of small, you know, it's worth doing once. And then nearby, there's a trail that you can go on. And I know there's something historical down at the bottom of it, but I don't remember what it was. So up in Alton, Illinois, there's the Piazza bird. And it was done a long time ago by Native Americans. And it's this legendary bird creature thing. And they had painted it up on the bluffs. And so when the French came through, there was Father Jacques Marquet. And he saw it and he recorded it down. And then when the explorer Pike was looking for the source of the Mississippi, he also saw it. So since then, it has been destroyed, but they have put up a replica of it. And so you can still see it. And then down south of St. Louis, down in Washington State Park. So that's an excellent camping site. And it's about an hour out of St. Louis. But if you go down to the bottom of the trail, there's um, some petroglyphs there. I haven't seen them because I was too lazy to go down the bottom of the trail, but I've heard they're really cool. And then over in Illinois, there's the Cahokia Mounds. So this whole region used to be known as Mound City. There was all these Native American mounds. And back in the time that Christopher Columbus was setting sail, there was a million Native Americans that lived in this area. And so they have a huge museum there. It's one of the largest museums in the United States. And they have like a video that you can watch and then a whole bunch of artifacts and stuff about like what digging sites are like. And then there's a, a replica of what the village and the people would look like. And then outside the museum, if you go on a nice day, there's still some of the mounds preserved and you can go up the steps if you can make up all those steps and see what it would be like from the top. And then they also have these wooden poles that are put in a circle, and it seems to have been an ancient calendar. So you can't eat inside the museum, so you'd want to plan to pack a picnic. But that one was really worth the drive to go there. Um, talking about the explorer, the time of the explorers, there's um, sometimes, I think it's in August, if you go up to Grafton, Illinois, they bring in replicas of the Nina and the Pinta, which were two of Columbus's ships, and you can pay to go on them. I think it was like $5 a person, and the ships are really tiny, but it's cool to see like what the actual size was like, and then there was only like three or four artifacts, so that one was, you know, like if you're studying that time period, it was cool, but it was also a little underwhelming, and I don't know if that's available this year. And then getting into the French time period, so this whole area used to be part of New France. And so down in St. Genevieve is probably the best place for what colonial life was like. And they have, the city will take you on a tour of their main buildings there. Um, they have, you know, artifacts and they'll tell you stuff about like the beds and different, like the um, high chairs and stuff. And then if you go on a nice day, we went when it was freezing, um, you can go outside and they have other stuff as well. They have a tiny museum. And then I know there's like his, a historical home tour that you can go on as well. I haven't done that. But the painter Audubon, he actually lived in that area for a long time. And so they have some information on him as well. There is, this was my favorite field trip I've ever done. It's called Fort Charette. And there was a restorer. His name is Crosby Brown. And he restored the trading post that used to be there. So Fort Charette 
is, I think it means little wagon. I'm gonna put his link down below because otherwise you'll never find it. But um, he knows so much about this time period. He actually did a reenactment of the Lewis and Clark Trail. And so he knows exactly what that's like. And usually when you go to a historical place, you know, they'll have a few knickknacks and artifacts or whatever. His place is just full. Like, it's kind of like going to an old person's house where they just have a ton of stuff. That's what his is like, but it's all super authentic. And so, like, you can ask him about anything. He's very knowledgeable. Um, I think his tour was about an hour, and he just works off of donations. And, um, like, he had uh, the cannon from the Battle of St. Louis. And I think that was his oldest artifact. So he has restored a bunch of buildings and he has brought in some other buildings as well. So that one was the best. And then over in the Illinois side, so that's like 30 minutes west of St. Louis. I don't know if I said that. And then over on the Illinois side, about an hour out of St. Louis, there's a, port, a place called Fort de Chartres. I don't know, I don't speak French. The locals, they call it Fort Chartres. And it's a, it still has most of the buildings there. And it's a French colonial fort. And so you can go through the buildings. They don't care if you like climb on stuff. So it's great for kids. And they do um, reenactments there. So we went on a weekend when they were having a fur trading post. And so the people brought in tents and they were selling crafts that they had made during the year. And there was a gun um, hunting reenactment or something. And they had like old timey food and stuff. And so that was really neat. And the day we went was freezing cold. So I would say definitely go when the weather's nice. So we were going to go later on in the spring, but then it had a bunch of flooding. But I know they're open now, and I don't know if they have any events going on. But they, I, I know usually they do a kid's day once in the fall. And I think you can actually camp there and do the different things that they have set up for the kids. I don't know a lot of information about that or if that's going on or what. So then um, also in Illinois, it's about 30 minutes out of St. Louis in Hartford, there's the Lewis and Clark State Historic Site. And this is a great museum. So they have a video and then a bunch of artifacts and like um, things that kids can like lift up and, you know, move around and stuff. And then in the middle of the room, they have a half replica of one of the ships. And so you can see exactly what that was like. And then they have a bunch of resources for kids, like books and stuff. And if you go on a nice day, you can go outside and they will tour you their other buildings. I think they had like a fort, um, like what a soldier would live in, as well as um, a, a person's home. And so they have artifacts in there as well. And they're very knowledgeable. Um, in May, I know that they do a reenactment. I haven't been there to it, but I've heard that it's really great. Um, in 1780, the only battle of the Revolutionary War that was west of the Mississippi was fought here in St. Louis. And so you can look up information about that, but the only thing that exists is downtown. There's a plaque about it, but that's all. So you just have to would look that one up yourself. Then you can go up to St. Charles. They have the first state capitol. Lewis and Clark Boathouse and the Daniel Boone Mu Museum. And those are all like, eh, you know. Um, there's also a Daniel Boone Museum that's west of St. Louis. I haven't been to it, but I've heard that it's really good. They do a homeschool day. I, they're probably not going to do it this year. I don't know. But I've heard that it's a great museum. I don't have any more information about that. If you go to the old courthouse downtown in St. Louis, they have a nicely done um information about the early time period here in Missouri, as well as black and slave information. They have a heavy focus on the Dred Scott case. And sometimes they have period, um, people coming in in period clothing that will talk about the things. And so that one's really worth the time to go down there if you're looking into that time period. You might also be able to find Civil War reenactments around St. Louis. I've never been to one because my kids were really, really sensitive about noise, but we were planning on it, but I don't know if any of those are going on this year. Once you get into the Civil War, you can go to the Jefferson Barracks Civil War Museum. It's a little expensive, but for older kids, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, I think that they had where you could like put on some sort of 
um, listening device in order to tour the place. We didn't do that. I just talked about it because I've read so many books. And they had a huge display of artifacts behind glass around the main room. And then in the middle of the room, they had like a stuffed horse and cannons and vehicle, like carriages or whatever. And so like, it was really well done. And then down in the basement, they have other information, um, stuff like about Jesse James and um, the battles across St. Louis. And then in the other buildings around Jefferson Barracks, they have information about the other wars. So pretty much if you're covering any war, you could go there because, you know, this used to be a huge military base here. And so there's World War I, World War II, uh, the Korean War, I think, um, the Vietnam War for sure. And so they have, and it's, those ones are all free. They work off of donations. So those ones were pretty cool too. And then um, after that time period, there's Grant's home. You might have been to Grant's farm and right across the street from there is Grant's home. And this is a very well-preserved, um, great site. They have a badge that you can do for, um, I forgot what it's called. It's like the National Parks for Children or something like that. Anyway, so you can do um, a scavenger hunt through that and then your kids get, get a little badge and they get sworn in or whatever. And so um, they have a great video about Grant and then they'll take you out and show you his old home that he lived in. They have a lot of information about him. And the neat thing about the home is that they have these displays where it's got like a TV and you press the button and it shows you what the people, um, what Grant or the slaves or whatever would have been doing there. And then they have like some toys set up in the corner to show you what like the toys during that time period were versus the toys now. You know, how would you compare that? Um, information about the kitchen and like the ice house and stuff. And then you can go back to the main building and they have this huge, it looks like a barn. And um, there's just like a bunch of information about Grant in that time period and there's stuff that kids can move around. There's a whole section where you can try on costumes because Grant and his wife were really into traveling around Europe and stuff. And so it, it's just a lot of fun. That one's definitely worth checking out and it's free. Um, you can go up to Hannibal, Missouri. Um, Mark Twain, he was a Missouri writer and he lived for a time in Hannibal. And so they have a whole section dedicated to his boyhood there. They have a Mark Twain, um, or Tom Sawyer, I don't know. They have a, an event there in the springtime. We went during that, it's pretty cool, um, where people, you know, have a craft fair and there's, uh, they there was um, Native Americans that had come in and done a powwow circle and other um, reenactments and stuff. And um, you can go up these, all these stairs to the top of this lighthouse. There's just a ton of information there. So that one's definitely worth the drive. I think it's about an hour out of St. Louis. And then there's also the Tom Sawyer cave there. There's actually two caves. And one of them takes you on the tour of what Tom Sawyer, his cave was like, because it was based off of Mark Twain, his boyhood. And so they'll even do where like they turn out all the lights and so you can see exactly how dark it is. So I'm, that's kind of expensive, but it's kind of cool to do once. Then getting into the later 1800s, there's, I haven't been there, but there's a Victorian home called the Campbell House, and they have restored and have a ton of artifacts and stuff there. And then getting into the 1900s, so there was the 1904 World's Fair that happened here in St. Louis. The History Museum has a pretty good section on this. And then at the zoo, that birdcage was actually one of the things that was built during or for the 1904 World's Fair. There was also a huge Ferris wheel. It had been at the Chicago World's Fair prior to this, and then it had come to St. Louis, but then afterwards they dismantled it, so there's nothing left of that, but there's cool books about it. And then um, over by the Botanical Gardens, there's the donut shop, and they sell the World's Fair donuts that they used to sell back during the World's Fair. So those are some connections that you can make. Um, there's the Telephone Museum. This one was really, really nifty. And it's over 
also at the Jefferson Barracks, so you might just want to hit it up at the same time. Um, the charge on it was not very much at all, and it was it was amazing. Like the guys there, they can talk for over an hour about telephones, and um, they will show you what fiber optics look like. And they have old timey phones. You can put in the coins and see how that works. And it's just a ton of information about how telephones changed over time, and about like wartime telephones. And then they have a whole room that's full of um, fun, different kinds of telephones that have been donated to them. So that one's definitely worth doing. I haven't been to it, but there's the Scott Joplin house here in St. Louis. Um, there's also a Frank Lloyd Wright house here. Not very many people have heard of that one. That one is very hard to get a tour for. You have to call ahead and they only do it on like Tuesdays or something really random. I don't know. And it's kind of expensive and it's over in off of Do Dottie Ferry. Dottie, I don't know how to pronounce that. I haven't lived here long enough. Um, but basically Frank Lloyd Wright, he had built this house for a friend who was an artist and it has all the original, um, furniture that Wright had designed for them. And you can go through a tour of that, but you're not allowed to touch anything. So like, you don't want to bring small kids in there. Like, I don't think they even allowed ch like young children to come. But um, if you're getting into that time period or studying architecture, that's really neat. Um, so they've got like, he had designed it to where you could pull out the pieces to make a huge table or just a small intimate gathering. So he had really thought through and it was just a house for like a regular kind of person. So it's a lot different than his other buildings. There's the Holocaust Museum that's over in the Creve Core area. I haven't been to it, but it's really supposed to be really good. Basically, I just didn't think that my kids were old enough to do that this year. There's the Griot Museum. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right but it's a black history and culture. I also haven't been there, so I can't say anything about it. So if that's not enough history for you, there's the new museum under the arch. And this is really neat. They did a good job on this. There's like, there's actually information about the battle of St. Louis, that revolutionary battle. So, I mean, the there's a wide variety and it basically goes through the timeline. The interesting to, thing to know about is that you have to go like this through the museum, because if you try to just like walk through it, it you're not going to get the linear pattern. So you weave back and forth across the walkway there. And that's free. So that's a neat one. And then looking for other um, places that you can go around St. Louis. So there's the World Bird Sanctuary. <coughs> and that's um, off of 44 and 141. And they um, basically nurse um, eagles and other birds and help them to get back to health. And so they have, you know, around 20 birds and they have trails there and it's really neat. And um, I would say wear good walking shoes because they have like gravel. And so it's kind of hard to push a stroller through there. They also have like a little um, building that you can go to and see other animals that they take care of, like rabbits and snakes and parrots. And you can like touch the bunnies. And I don't think there's any other animals that you could pet or whatever. Um, so you can go there sometimes for different events. And nearby, there's the Lone, Arc, Lone Elk Park, where you can drive through and see the bison. Um, south of St. Louis, there's a place called, called the Bon Terre Mine. This is nice when it's hot out. Um, it was originally a mine and now they do tours through there. That's a little eh, compared to some of the other caves that I'm going to talk about, but they do do um, where you can go diving there. I don't know. We actually did where you could take the little boat and they bring you around. It was a nice place to cool off when we went camping one time. There's the Merrimack Caverns um, outside of on the west side of St. Louis. I think it was about 30 or 40 minutes out. Um, this one's kind of pricey, um, but it's stroller friendly. Um, it's a lot of the features there are no longer living. And so it's eh, kind of a eh, kind of cave. Um, it's worth doing once. Nearby, there's a place called Fisher Cave. This one costs a lot less. I don't know if they're open, um, but it's, more authentic and um, like there's a section of it where you have to like duck walk for
for like 50 yards or something. I was like worried that like my child was going to fall off because there was like no railings and stuff. I don't know. It's kind of like you have to be more daring, but they give you like a lantern. And so it's really authentic feeling. Um, there is a Lock and Dam National Great Rivers Museum, and that's at Alton, Missouri. This is so cool. So they have a whole museum that you can walk through that's about like Missouri wildlife and the river system and stuff. And they have great displays there. And then you can also go out on the tours of the locks and dams. So they'll let you walk out on these and they take you up and they take you down and they take you in this private little area where there's a replica that you can push the buttons and reenact how the locks and dams work. And so it's really neat. You wanna go there when the weather's nice you could go in like January and see the eagles there um, and it's free. Speaking of eagle days, so that happens in like the winter time and there are a ton of places that you can go to go see the eagles. There's the Chain of Rock Bridges, Chain of Rocks Bridge. Um, there's the Audubon Center at the Riverlands and we went there one time and it was amazing. So they had brought in a whole bunch of experts that had information about different kinds of birds. And so they would show you like how the things worked, like their skulls, how big their wings were and stuff. And then they had telescopes set up so you could like look through and see the birds down um, by the water feeding and stuff. So that one's really cool. I haven't been to it, but there's the World Chess Hall of Fame. There's um, symphonies where they do educational programs. There's the St. Louis Family Theater up in Florissant, and they put on little plays that are about an hour long. And some of these are really well done. I, actually, I'd say that probably all of them are. I haven't been, I've only been to a few of them, so I can't say for sure. But we did one that was um, Charlotte's Web was really cute. There was uh, Ugly Duckling. We thought that one was gonna be lame, but it was a really neat light thing that they did. It was just amazing. So, and those are really cheap. So those are nice to do. There's a historic aircraft restoration museum, and that's in Creve Corps. They have anywhere between like 30 or 40 hangered, hang, I don't know, aircraft that you can go through and see. I haven't been to that, but you know, if you had a kid that was interested. And one that I'm wanting to do is the Federal Reserve. So you can go on a tour there and they show you economy, uh, basically they have an economy museum and outside the museum I've heard that there's this um, cube a glass cube and it has a million dollars in there so you can see what that would look like so there are a ton of great places to go around St. Louis besides just your normal field trips so if those are available that those might be worth checking out this year either way it's not a big deal